Welcome to Off the Press. This is the program, as you know, where we take a look at national dailies and make sense of it, you know, we dissect it and try to understand it. And with me to do so this morning are two gentlemen, two Boston Akejo, who is the reputation manager of all time. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, Dr. Femi Dohu Adegoke, who is the public affairs analyst also. Good morning. Good to have you both this Tuesday morning. Uh, we, yeah, we have too many um, papers right in front of me. me well, I'm feeling like it's Christmas already. Is anybody feeling the same? Uh, well, just like that. Day, at least. Just, ish, ish. Beats. just with the yeah. lights. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and pieces around. Okay. Okay, before we get into the Christmas mood, let's begin with the Punch newspaper. And it says, a shameless fate. Governors plot to install Buhari's successor. That story is the big story, but it's on page two of the Punch newspaper. We can't shut governors out, says National Vice Chairman, and state chairman's meeting with Buhari to save APC chair. Okay, and then on the top there, we see FG Russian firm sign MOE on Ajaokuta. That's according to minister there on page 24. And PNID court dismisses Britain's request for bail condition variation. That story is on page 18 of the Punch newspaper already displayed there. Thank you. And electronic uh, collation transmission of results possible in 2023. Oh, wow. Okay. That story is on page 19 uh, with the picture of Mahmoud there. I guess he's the one saying, of course. And then federal government owes road contractors 306 billion naira, says Fashola. Sorry, you can say it, but that's what is there. It's on page 30 of the Punch newspaper. And Buhari replaces Fowler, appoints NAMI as FIRS chairman. That story with the new development is on page 25 of the Punch newspaper. And if we go further down, RCCG begins Holy Ghost Congress. Worshippers seek turnaround. Okay, this nation actually needs spiritual intervention, I agree. And Edo Assembly writes, INEC demands by elections for absentee members elect. That's on page 19. Three die in Ikorodu and Aja court clashes on page five. Scary situation there. Anti graft war stop selective approach. MBA tells Buhari on page two. AKT revokes 2.9 billion naira road contract, threatens contractors' prosecution on page 15, I believe. An estate electrician accomplice attack Mersk, I believe that's what it's called, MD, and killed the wife. That unfortunate uh, incident that happened on Sunday night. The story is on pages four and five of the Punch newspaper. And finally, Shoinka demands Bolaige's murder probe report on page seven. Where do we begin? So many stories. Uh, to Boston, let's start with you. I think we can start with the, uh, I think I would even start with Aja Okuta. Okay. We've had more press release and news mention than mm -hmm. action in Aja Okuta. And the question that That's I- That's so huge, it, more press release. Uh, that, news, uh, yeah, news yeah, what that really, action. Yeah, so what not really in anything happened, concrete. What has really happened? And I'm starting to even, you know, I've started to call to question the possibility or the commercial viability of bringing back Ajakuta because oh. it's a steel mill that, you know, was built many years ago. Um, I think I once heard somewhere that the Russians built it and they're the only yeah. ones that can really bring it back because they're the ones And you know, we really have this, we are almost in bed again with them. Yes. We are, you know, we are, we are already in bed with them. But, so they've signed the MOU. Please, so what is really going what to happen? What's in the MOU and all of that? You know, so I, I just really hope that we get, you know, um, serious about bringing back that part. But what also, you know, I'm, I'm more concerned about is beyond just, we're, we're, we're about leaving the industrial age, so to speak, you know. Mm -hmm. um, there was a time when steel was really very, very important in, in development. It's still as important, but I think that there are more things that we need to do. Leading the way. Yes. Um, I, there's a bit, I, I'm starting again to think, and I might be wrong, that there's a bit of obsession with this hmm. Ajao Kuta, unnecessary obsession. Maybe we just have some sentimental attachment. Exactly, it's I, I starting to, to look like go. that, you know. Yes, it's big, Should it's we? huge. And which is why I said what I said before that. Mm. What is even the commercial viability of bringing this thing upstream? What's the benefit? What's, is the benefit going to be very, very significant, you mm. know? Um, I was reading an IMF report this morning, just came in through it, and he's saying that though next year we might become less 
all dependent in terms of exports. Our exports, the value of what we're exporting is still going to be low, mm. you know, and all of that. Those are the things that we, you know, we really, really need to, to question and not some of this look good, um, fancy headlines and mm. announcement that we've just signed an MOU. Please, can we have some action? You know, can we have some results? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh. Well, do you want to still talk about no, I, I, I have agree, some sentimental agree, attachment? No, 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 to it? I agree totally with him mm. because I'm a, I've been an advocate of talk less and do more. Mm -hmm. um, this Ajay Okuta case has been on since the, Mr. President went to Russia. They've been talking, 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 nothing on ground. But the question I have is I hope this is not another white, uh, elephant. Quote, white elephant or fraudulent. Because it might just be that it will only favor the Russians and Nigerians get little or no benefit. That is what my fear is mm. all about. I so. hope we'll be smarter this time. Let yeah, me see. I, I hope so. Okay, so let's move away from Aja Okuta and what else is catching your attention? Well, we'll start with uh, you. Oshomole and his uh, party members, <laughs> the PC government, Are government you the plot drama? to install Buhari's successor. It's sad for me. That it's is sad, sad and you're laughing. Yeah, you know, it's sad for us as Nigerians. Contrast. This is, they just came in mm. for another four years. We have not even started work. They have started politicking. Yeah, maybe they need to do the underground I actually, work. It's none of our I business. Do your party that, business. I actually think that the present government is highly fragmented mm. and distracted. Um, because I'm like... In the midst of all the problems that we're having, mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, there's there's a humongous security challenge that we are having. Right. You know, we've moved from, you know, the the issue of militants to Boko Haram, which is to not bandits. completely out of it, to bandits, mm. to kidnapping, to herdsmen, and now there seem to be, you know. On a weekly basis, a news about someone getting stabbed in That's Lagos, scary. in Southwest, That's really you know, scary. and all of that. And what the people who are supposed to be concerned and responsible for the security, whose primary responsibility, you know, is the security of citizens. Mm. What they are concerned about is Buari's success, and not even the success of Buari in this dispensation, you know. I think that it's... Um, it, uh, it, it, the, the, the recent, the things that have happened in the last about two weeks um, is getting, or in the last about one week, um, one month rather, I'm getting a lot more worried and scared about the country mm. because there's only so much people can continue to take. When you see news like this, what it shows to you is that the people who are at the M's of FPA don't really care about what is going on. Exactly. Uh, I, I make reference to um, another story you have there about the um, the estate electrician yeah, attacking the there. mask and um, MD. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, you know, I was having a conversation over the weekend and saying that there's a bigger problem of hopelessness in the country. Yeah. Um, the, 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 the problem where the average or the downtrodden cannot see a path out of their way. Mm. And so they'll grab at anything to survive. Even though that's not a justification. It is never a justification. Mm -hmm. But you see, true, when yeah. certain things start to happen, you have to come and look at the ad and the soft part that's of the it. Truth. The truth is that there's hopelessness in the land. And some of the things fueling this hopelessness is when you see news like this, mm. where Everybody is saying that poverty, you know, um, uh, the, 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 the the amount of the, the, the poverty rate is, is getting very, very bad. And then the people who are supposed to be focused on solving that problem. Uh -huh. What you see that they are it's trying to do office. is how they're going to install, you know, a successor who is supposed to come in four years mm -hmm. time. You know, the average man on the street might not... Uh, uh, completely analyze or break it down the way we are having this conversation now. Yeah. But at the end of it, what that person is going to feel that like, nobody really cares about me, mm -hmm. you know. So I'm going to grab at anything, and, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and take uh, laws into it. I hope that the people at the ends of affairs, uh, the, the, the so-called leaders, mm -hmm. will at least want for a second pull back, you know, and 
allow the, the country and the citizen be their primary objective, the wellness, the security, uh, the development of the country to be at, you know, at the, the forefront, forefront of wh why we are here. Because one thing is sure, if you perform Mm. as a party you would not struggle to install or you know to pick someone you know people are actually going to beg you to, uh, to, to continue Don't what you? i usually say is that the reward for good work is actually more work yeah. you know um, so i mean i just really hope that they will listen before everybody before we spiral down into serious anarchy mm. Yeah, I agree with you on that. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, and I'm also worried, just as you are, because in just this paper, we have the uh, security, insecurity case, you know, the stabbing of the MD mm. and the wife who was killed, unfortunately. Mm. We also have, there's something also here about court clashes. Yes, also um, three die in the So, you know, the security challenges. So I'm, 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 let me let me let me make a funny a funny um, Sorry, uh, is that sorry? It's all in interwoven. So let me let me, all let me let me let yeah. me when last week what happened in the court with the DSS and Shore? Um, Friday. That's a yes. it's become it's it's now historic. It's historic and I'm going to I'm going to try and draw a parallel between how we are how different security forces treat Nigerians badly, and it almost has become mm. their MO. No. So the SAS will pick up people without due process, do not give you the opportunity to contact anybody Body. or anything, keep lock you, you some lock you up, almost incriminate you in, in bad ways. Um, if you by any chance offend a military man, he's going to harass you. Mm. If you by any chance um, go in the wrong way with someone who is highly connected, they are going to use the security forces to do it. And then one of the most preserved and respected part of the Nigerian security forces, mm. the DSS, you know, in a very... You see, the, the issue of... The jury is out on the issue of Shore. You know, and I, I, they claim to be absolutely very objective. You know, is an activist who has contested an election, mm -hmm. and that become, that changes the narrative yeah. of what he does going forward. Yeah. You know, so the jury is out on him. What was very cons what what I was very disturbed that DSS, who from when I was very young, I had believed that they are the most you know, tactful yeah. and most intelligent part of the Nigerian yeah, security apparatus, yeah. you know, will walk into, you know, what happened that way, you know, will brazenly do something it's that they will know. Will, yeah, more than ever, is actually absolutely very disappointing because what happened on Friday shows lack of tact completely on all yeah. sides. You would not expect that an intelligent. Where am I going? It has come to a state where every Nigerian is now trying to attach itself to something for protection. Yeah. Yeah. So you have people put cameras in their car so that immediately any security man jumps into your car or for whatever reason, he sees that you're recording and everybody can see what's going so the person will come up. It's come to the stage that people put stickers on their car. I mean, we've been doing the stickers thing yeah. for, for time. Man. It's come to a stage where we are putting things in our car that kind of makes us look like we belong to a certain thing so that when they see they're just like class. you know so there's a lot of posturing yes. that is going on Security on the well. flip side there are going to be people who are going to belong to illegal mm. entities you know and that is how they are going to feel that they are going to be able to get protection so it is not absolutely surprising that it seems like courts gangs are yeah. expanding because they feel like <clears throat> That's the only this way they so can. Scary. It's absolutely like so it's, scary it's, to think when of it, you know. I, I was saying again that unfortunately, recently there's been a lot of stabbing, and when you look at some of the stabbings that have happened, there's constantly been people being stabbed in the neck. neck. So I'm asking the question: Is it possible that there's a gang whose mo is the you know you want to show that you know how to attack someone you go for the neck let's not think about it it's so scary we'll move on to the next paper thank you for your intervention there mm. and it's the nation newspaper up for review now it says the zionist ally loses oil firm over 29 billion debts amcon takes over that story is on page 11 as displayed there and again the sad story of the death of uh, the Musk md's wife and uh, two suspects held, thankfully. And that story is on page five. Joshua dreams of title defense in Nigeria to battle Ruiz in May. That's on page 47. And there's something else there. 
uh, Rao grows over Shaware as presidency and groups clash. I think that's the big story for the nation newspaper. Let me come to you, Femi. Which one do you want to talk about this well, morning? Well, um, I'll try. I'll talk about the grounds of Ashore as presidency groups clash. Mm. The, this morning in the news, I heard that some uh, pressure groups, Serap and uh, human rights activists, some yeah. lawyers, they're giving the federal government certain time what limits, to fourteen, 14 days, days. Yes. Mm. to to release Shore, mm. or else there will the be the NBA is also part of that. Yeah, that there will be a demonstration and. Um, all sorts in the country. And it will take me back to what he said. It is the federal government who has made this a big mess. Shore contested election, lost. So if you were an activist before, you obviously became a politician. Uh -huh. After losing that election, you're now calling for revolution. And it's, for me, it's a no-no. It's a no know the way he went about it. So you think that's the deal breaker? Yeah, for him, for me personally, what the way he went about it was wrong. But, yeah, the government arrested him, charged him to court, they granted him bail, leave him. Now, a lot of the elites who even were not on Shore's side, mm. that's the honest truth, yeah. and now the public sentiments is whipping around now. And people are becoming, they are, they're not even talking about Shore alone now. They're looking at themselves. That like, okay, what about if I have a case or something? Is this how I'm going to Is be treated? Is he I'm going to be treated? Mm. Would you really want if, to speak up for the country? If... Yeah, exactly. And if you want to play Shore where he's not an, as an activist now, he's an ex uh, presidential, presidential candidate. Candidate. Yeah. Our candidate. Candidate. Not candidate. Even an aspirant. So he's, he has some kind of a, a status in the society. So what is the fate of a common man? And then coming back to what happened in the court, like he said, the DSS lost the attack. Completely. I read in some article that it was Shore, Shore was already going out of court, seeing the DSS, him and his people ran back into the court. And mm. the DSS, either foolishly or knowingly, followed I mean, there's the been a lot of, uh, you know, yeah, different, different stories. Uh, stories but from out. the video that we saw, mm. you understand? And then the judge sitting had to, uh, had to uh, go back to, go to back change, to the yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that means there was no regard, no respect for the court. For the court mm. But Chambers. it's just our society. I've always said it. The elites in this country, they're very selfish, they're greedy, and they're self-centered. The elites are the greatest problem the country has had in a long time. And like he said, now, every common man is trying to build their own security. Mm -hmm. And that's why I said it's all interwoven. Mm -hmm. It's all interwoven. This gives back to this, this gives back to that. And it goes, we're going around in circles. Mm -hmm. We're not making a headway. Uh, so the challenge now in the country is the government of the day needs to wake up and do something very, very urgent before we fall into anarchy. Yeah, mm -hmm. completely. I just have one thing. Again, I think that... Comment is very, very distracted and disjointed. I don't know, almost fragmented don't even, in your yes, words. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't even think I want to continue to comment on this. One item, one news item that caught my attention there, and I think that in another program on your station, I'll have the opportunity to talk about it more. Is Joshua, you know, coming to fight? You know, it was surprising. Well, you should come on the spot show then. <laughs> well, it was surprising to see the press then. Uh, the Senate press then yeah. congratulating, you know, a lot of them congratulating Joshua over his victory, even though, the, the, you know, there's a commercial set to him. Mm. But in the same weekend, we had someone in town. You had an American artist, Cardi yeah. B, in town, yeah. who obviously was very, very surprised. And the question I'm asking myself is, Dubai, South Africa, Rwanda, Rwanda are making humongous yeah. revenue from yeah. promoting their country. Yeah. Do we have problems in Nigeria? Absolutely, we have problems. Do those countries have problems? Yeah. Yes, yes they, they do, they do mm. you know, but they have consistently promoted something about their country. Okay, yeah. Who is responsible for promoting something good about Nigeria? And the thing is, mm. bad news yeah, travels faster. Oh, yeah. It is easier, I mean, 
Before you say Jack Robinson, CNN, everybody, Al Jazeera, Reuters have picked up the news of Shogure. When we go up and our whole city is lit up for celebration, who is promoting that? Mm. You know, with the good things that are happening in Nigeria, who is actively, you know, who has made it, who in government or who has made it their own responsibility to say that to put we are... Put a touchlight on that area. Exactly, to continue Focus to promote it. and say that, yes, every country, you know, have probably, there's gun violence in the U.S. Of every, course. every bleeding time, you know. So... I mean, just to move away from all the gloomy, gloomy story, mm -hmm. you know, very happy. Let's share the good news and celebrate Yes, I'm, and, 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 and it's surprising that even though Joshua continues to fight as a British, of course. you know, he still <laughs> doesn't deny, he's you, know, he's all, you know, that he's from Nigeria, yeah. you know, which is, uh, which is very, very... Um, all right, very valid points there that you raised. So let's just quickly take the last paper in the interest of time. That will be The Guardian. And Buhari, again, DSS gets ultimatum to free Shawaret, sure Dasuki and others. Uh, NAMI replaces Fowler as FIRS boss. That's on page three of the Guardian newspaper, already displayed there. Thank you. Uh, Shoyinka says CSOs urge vigorous intervention in corruption fights on page four and past sector privatization fraudulent. Lawan alleges. That's on page three. And again, assailant attack Maersk MD stab wife to death at Ikoi residence. Quite unfortunate. A woman sentenced to death for killing co wife and seven step. Children, that's wickedness in its highest level. And Senate uh, panel, Akpabio, face off over NDDC and gets uh, messier. And that's it uh, for Guardian. The story continues on page six. Let's just take one story and call it a wrap. And which one story shall we take? The power sector is of serious interest. I see Femi agrees. agrees. <laughs> Before you even start, it's not the power sector. Yeah. We're in mm. agreement on that. And, you know, um, I just hope that so we have the Senate president will not go ahead and just allege that there was corruption there, but would move to ensure that the right thing is done to solve the problem in that sector because it's at the core hmm. of our problem in this country. Femi. Let me just add my, uh, my voice to that. The power sector privatization, yeah, we've all heard that it's fraudulent, it's corruption, but the truth is, are you going to do the right thing? A proper decentralization of the power sector. Hmm, that's a good way to wrap it up. Thank you so very much to Boson and Femi for coming to Thank you for having us. help us understand all that is going. And this is where we are going to call it a wrap for today on Off the Press. We'll do this tomorrow at the same time, 8.30 here on Plus TV Africa. And I am Amaka Okuyi. Have yourselves a good day.